So hello guys, uh, my name is Ashutosh Yadav and uh, I am a brand strategist and uh, creative director at Design No Monkey Fried Limited and today we are going to talk about a very very important topic Bharat's transformation journey and uh, my co-host will be Yogesh Udgiri he is the owner of Digital Transformation Academy let me... Uh, huh. Hi Ashutosh, nice to have you here Hello everybody I'm Yogesh Udgiri here and excited to be with all of you to share our experiences, some of our knowledge and also some of the success stories with regards to the Bharat's growth journey, the transformation journey and also the career and the growth trajectory that you as a student should be having. Over to you Ashutosh. Okay, so uh, today what we are going to do is very simple. Th uh, this is a set of series uh, we are planning for all the people who really want to grow in their particular life, who really want to uh, be in uh, ahead of the curve and who really want their career to be developed. So this is a career and growth series where uh, if you are a student, if you are an entrepreneur, uh, even if you are starting the entrepreneur journey, we are going to talk about how you can do that better. And if you are already uh, an entrepreneur with some experience in your life with some companies or uh, uh, some different ventures in uh, uh, specific areas, we are going to take lots of questions also and going to tell lots of specific answers in different different scenarios. So today we are going to talk a little bit of the Baras transformation journey and what exactly happened. So uh, there is a question, uh, Mr. Yogesh, tell me. Uh, uh, a little bit of history about Bharat, uh, how Bharat actually grew uh, in this particular scenario in the modern era. Yeah, so before we go to the history, uh, what is more pertinent for us also, so we can start it from age old, the Gurukul system that we had and when Swami Vivekananda went abroad to USA, the proponent of Hindu word that he told the Sanatan Dharma that he told and till to the modern era. So what is most relevant to us is what is there for us in the future. So when we say Bharat journey, the word Bharat also comes from the word Go, which tells us as a light, the one which comes from the light. So the Bharat journey is already, the name itself is when we say Tamasama Jyotirgamaya from darkness to light. So what is this light? The light is for the wisdom. And all along in the Indian subcontinent or in the Bharat Varsha, what we call it as, people have been aspiring for much more bigger things in life. So that has been the thing. Now what has happened in the modern, we can say the tech era, there are a lot of tools which are there. There are a lot of techniques which have come. The science has grown, but the connection with what we were here for, that has been lost. So. It is a very right time that the young generation currently in India is benefiting. So what is the right time here is never ever in the history of Bharat, there were opportunities which are there today. So the younger generation is the most blessed generation, which is coming with the enhanced software, not only enhanced software, because as a person, when I'm seeing here sitting in front of you as a 51 year young guy, and the people who are young generation. So there is an enhanced software that has taken place. So what I mean by software is they are already born into the tech era. So the people, the children who are being born today, they are into the chat GPT era. So what we call it as this wisdom, artificial intelligence. According to me, Bharat Varsha speaks about divine intelligence. So that is the opportunity for the younger generation. Now, when we say the career and the growth, now both aspects, so career is much more than the education that is there. It is much more than the job that you have. It is the connotation for the career is the one which has a bigger expanse of life. However, what I see the student today, as well as the society, as well as the government, so I'm not blaming any particular thing, but we don't have the complete 360 degree view of the opportunity landscape that is present to all of us. So the younger generation never ever when I say in the history of the world, 
द ऑपॉर्चुनिटीज विच हैव कम आर सो मच इन मैग्नीट्यूड सो मेनी इन नंबर्स द टेक्नोलॉजी इज देयर द नीड इज देयर द मनी इज देयर एंड ऑल द थिंग्स सूटेबल इट इज वॉट इज रिक्वायर्ड इज जस्ट कनेक्टिंग द डॉट एंड इन कनेक्टिंग दिस डॉट्स the most important vital part is being played by our mindset so chat gpt is there however what is required is how to dig dive dig and dive deep into chat gpt to get the jewels out of it so what is required for the current student is what is it that they need to understand is asking the right question and asking the right question is one of the techniques which these students need to develop when we speak about the bharat so my focus would be much more on what are the future things that are there for them we will discuss about the past of the bharat also but what is there when india is there going ahead into the deep technology into the space technology into the quantum into the artificial intelligence into the digital technologies and a whole lot of things and not only that but applying them this recent success upi has been a global phenomena which all the countries world over have accepted so right for what is the lowest strata of the life of the person in india citizen of india to the highest person everybody is involved into the ecosystem the same way the universal health interface is one of the biggest project which is there where all the health records of the individuals would be there so for the students what i would like them to invite in this next 20 minutes of interaction which is there you can come up with your questions also but most importantly what is required is out a mindset so sit here with the open mindset as we take down into the journey of different aspects of the growth that are there and then you can have a choice what is the domain that you want to pursue with regards to your career as you complete your education also yes definitely uh, uh... asking questions really really important so uh, we don't have much of the concurrent views of uh, four of the people are uh, right now with us so uh, please ask the questions whoever is with us and uh, we will uh, try to answer is as soon as possible and then as apt as possible so uh, uh, from there let me show you one particular video uh here it is and uh, we'll see about that. You know what is a percentage of GDP that India has grown this year in 2021? What do you think is the growth of GDP? Percentage. Percentage. 8 and a half 8 and a half percent. 0.6% higher than last year. Okay. I love the fact that India is growing. Right. It, well, they're still under 3 trillion dollars. It's no problem. They're right. going to grow so fast. Look how fast who was China 30 years ago? Nobody. Right. Who's China today? Number 2. Who's India today? <laughs> Don't get it twisted. Look how quickly India is going to so come. So you're up. saying that's going to be a good thing for the Fantastic. world. Fantastic. If India Fantastic. Would it be a good thing of the world if US, I'm sorry, if India surpasses China India and the US? India is not a bad number 1. India is not a bad number. Because they're a democracy. India doesn't wake up in the morning saying, "You better think like us or else." India doesn't wake up in the morning with Modi saying, "Take all the negative reviews out." India yeah. doesn't do that. That's what China does. Right. China believes in force. India doesn't believe in force. It's a bit it's a mindset. You want the right mindset to be number 1. So I guess uh, a lot of people are talking about why India is doing uh, something this, something that, because we know uh, as an Indian that we are not like that. See, a lot of people say that uh, it would have been something different, something different would have been uh, uh, you know achieved if we were the first. It's not uh, so. this one good thing come out of uh, this particular scenario this world uh, ge- uh, geographical uh, geopolitical scenarios is that we have two comparisons uh, i guess uh, mr yogesh you, you will be uh, agreeing with me i guess because we, we talked uh, a few days ago about the same particular topic that we have an example of america who has a more money centric country has done a lot of good and at the same time has done lots of mistakes and we can learn from those mistakes and we have china as a more uh, dictatorian kind of uh, uh, scenarios where where they have their own uh, set, set of agendas and they have done something really good and they have done some really amazing mistakes from which we can actually learn so both far right and far left we can learn from them we can be uh, neutral at the same time we can be more progressive 
so this is a very nice thing absolutely mr ashutosh see the peculiar situation of india what you rightly said is that as a bharat varsha as a india we need to learn whatever is the best available be it china or be it usa but now i'll just give you a different perspective the entire chinese economy is production based so china is the world's production factory so the the more they produce the more the economy grows that is the thing of china now come to usa usa is a consumption economy the more it consumes the economy grows so that is one engine economic engine is derived by the production this engine us engine is derived by consumption now in this entire scenario india is a peculiar country which has its own production engine also which has its own consumption engine also and it is not dependent on any of them so the world is recognizing the importance of india now and the importance is we have the most youthful population the world's biggest youthful population working population currently resides in india and that is the biggest asset that india has the working class population which neither china has which nor usa has so that's one part of it secondly the government has done the most amazing work in last 9 years and they have brought the entire digital infrastructure if you see recently the g20 also released the digital infrastructure policy document and it was distributed world over also so the digital infrastructure document if you go through that ashutosh and what i am requesting the students also currently in the engineering syllabus or in the mba syllabus i'm quite astonished the students don't visit the government sites not to the ministry sites how many students have visited the isro site how many students have visited the barc website or the drdo website or ministry of information technology or the ai side or the quantum things or the deep tech so there are so many things initiatives that the government is doing but the reach the awareness that still we need is still not there so when you say usa as well as china we need not go with both of them we have our own identity we have our own sanatan economics which is there and this sanatan economics is playing a major vital role just for example i tell you the pilgrimage footfall at varanasi per year is to be around 6 to 7 lakhs which has now the last year the statistics which came so there were around 7 crore plus pilgrims who visited varanasi just one center so the transformation of the temple has caused such a huge transformation and the number of pilgrimage also so this sanatan economics works in a different paradigm it's a different pedagogy altogether now coming back to the students career and growth now currently we need not be myopic into those parts so currently our students also beat engineering beat chartered accountants beat mbas beat doctors the missing link with the indian students is that still most of the students in india they have a job mentality they are approaching the career only with regards to job however a minuscule fraction who started on the startup journey and india was able to create 108 unicorns we have one of the most thriving ecosystem and that percentage if we still increase further i'm sure where you be number 1 into the startup ecosystem also globally that is the opportunity which is there for the students the domains which are there be it of education be it of farming be it of using non conventional sources be it hydrogen or solar or farming or agrotech or drone technology i can go on and go on and telling so many things which are there now recently ashutosh i heard one i came across one article which showed the importance of ayurveda now artificial intelligence the generating ai tools are telling how impactful and effective our ayurvedic medicines are compared to the allopathic medicines now what they are not also telling is that allopathic medicines are the best for the emergency cures no doubt about it but when it those illnesses are there the side effects which are there which is for which does not require urgent information 
uh, attention ayurveda is playing a good role and i am seeing now currently the ministry of ayush they are also inducing technology into that they are also bringing in the concepts about the clinical trials which are required for the ayurvedic medicine also and this will transform the entire wellness industry in india same is with the travel tourism industry india is slated from the number 20th position i was told in the travel tourism people say now we'll be on the top 3 in the coming 2 to 3 years so those are the opportunities that we are talking about and the impact the ripple effect or we call it as a compounding effect will be much more broader which will be much more stronger deeper and higher also so i think what is most important is as we discuss all those things the number of job opportunities also which are there which are also in a very big way those are also increasing so it is not just job it is not just startups it is not just the government recruitments it is also the indian skill professionals which are required outside of india also so if you see the whole segment all together that's what i say that the career and the growth opportunities never ever were higher the currently what are they are today yes definitely uh, uh, one very crucial uh, uh, thing actually came into mind when you said so uh, i uh, uh, told someone to brought down my diary uh, that was my uh, analysis and what exactly is happening to be good at something like it, it's a default mechanism every single person every single entity wants to be good at something this is what uh, we want even if we are happy in certain aspect and uh, sad in certain aspects this is what drives us to be good at something like best antidote to the discomfort of life people think uh, best antidote to discomfort of life is comfort no not exactly sometimes comfort becomes boring after after a certain level excellence and adventure actually that that's w- 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 what's a general perspective and sigmund freud said uh, the good mother necessary fails it's actually uh, a correlation with uh, what exactly we uh uh think here that you said that go uh, go out and uh, even if uh you have some issues you, even uh, th- there are miseries just go out and have some experience this is what uh, uh, the main logic comes comes into you so i have some uh, websites uh, you told about some websites no? so so i have got some websites opened here uh, uh can we see them one by one so that yes, we can actually yes, reach more yes it's good so this people who are online they will also enjoy it. show it to them also so this is one of uh, the website it's uh, about the gdp in india uh, expanding 7.2% in 2022 and 2023 so uh, so it's a uh, uh, since 2023 to 2024 uh, it's it's a projection so uh, we uh, d- during the uh, pandemic there was definitely uh, uh, a, a minus 5.8 percent uh, percentage but we actually grew alarmingly amazing so we have been one of uh, not not exactly one of the uh, the fastest uh, growing economy uh, it's been titled to us and uh, one website uh, this which is the world bank actually says with a population of more than 1.2 billion india is the world's largest democracy over the past decade the country integration uh, country's integration to the global economy has been accompanied by economic growth india has now emerged as a global player so right now even a uh, world bank is acknowledging acknowledging us uh, as a global player and then uh, there are some uh, real amazing statistics that after uh, uh, covid there was lots uh, lots of the people uh, uh, lots of the countries actually never recovered till uh now they have never recurred uh, but uh, what we have done is like uh, there is a uh, amazing uplift and then we maintained that was uh, right so i should know what has happened is people were not prepared for the covid mm-hmm. so the blow that covid gave people and not only people but the businesses even the countries they were devastated so what you said is very much right they were not able to recover faster regain faster the speed at which which we the entire world was moving the blow the impact of covid was so huge that's why they are taking time to recover from the covid impact and ashutosh you know here gdp what you said is very much right but we as indians no doubt we should celebrate our laurels 
but we should also focus on those important elements that will give us the long term results now as you discuss the gdp no doubt the world agrees that india is the fastest growing economy consistently but the two factors which we need to pay attention one is the human development index india is lagging far behind the world in hdi human development index also the per capita income of india when we say it is just around 2500 dollars per annum and those of developed economies it is almost 30000 us dollars so the gap is almost 10 times ashutosh now that is what needs to be brought out so we should celebrate those growth things and all also we should okay the new education policy is putting those things milestones in place what i liked about the government is that government of india in the new education policy has included technology education like coding also from standard 5 that's the best part of it not only the coding technology part they are also including the money management part of it bit economics because money was never taught as a subject for us in our engineering also to a large extent and also the entrepreneurship so what i liked about the new education policy if you ask me these are three elements one is they are created the syllabus how to teach entrepreneurship from standard 5 to 12 how to teach them technology how to teach them coding from those domains how to teach them about money or economics how the money is created how the money is managed how the money is grown on all those aspects now that is the transformation of bharat i am talking about and for that government of india is first started training the teachers so it is called as uh, i think mmtc madan mohan malviya uh, teachers training course that's the name of the initiative which is given and all the teachers across the higher education institutions then the schools government of india has initiative that the teachers are going to be trained and now the teachers role is not to teach because that domain has gone why the domain is gone earlier people who used to get degree they used to get a job but now currently degree is not important what is most vital in this digital technology age is what skills do you possess what capabilities do you produce or what are the results that you can produce so no doubt knowledge is most essential that is vital but just knowledge is not going to have your great career or a job along with knowledge a set of skills a set of capabilities are also required so what the things is that so example i take again of chat gpt the teachers also need to be trained on how to use the chat gpt not only that the student also because chat gpt also the course curriculum set being created how to use those tools it is not just chat gpt i'm just taking example but how to use those tools effectively how to use the generative ai effectively so that wonderful things can be created now that is the opportunity what we are presenting so when you see perfectly so the impact of covid because people who are not prepared they lost india the way it was because beat vaccination beat the food distribution the losses of the lives that we had it was the most minimal even people percentage wise if you see the people who died in the covid in europe and usa it was much more higher than what people died in india absolutely we should do that also but currently ashutosh today our focus was more on the career opportunities which are there and how is that the growth because the exponential growth has become a norm now earlier it is to take for people so many years to get to that momentum to get to that levels of knowledge or levels of money or designation but this exponential the current ecosystem which is so fantastically there the money is there the market is there people are there the technologies are there so this exponential growth ecosystem is the most biggest opportunity for the students currently so we'll surely do a separate video on what nepa nep has to offer and how that is also going to transform that also we will do so ashutosh i have a question here yes the question here is from a student who is asking that he is confused they have done their graduation 
So he says BMS, okay, Bachelor of Management Service. So he says there are only one option which is there for us and that is doing an MBA. So the question that is asked is, I don't see much options with regards to career apart from either taking up a job or doing an MBA. Suggest me something which is different from these two. What will you comment? Okay, here uh, we actually can uh, differ from what exactly he wants to what exactly he can uh, actually achieve. See, there are two aspects. One, if he is really, really focusing on the job and he really wants to, uh, you know, improve from the job and uh, 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 from there he can actually uh, have lots of options. Like uh, he can definitely go for uh, MBA and uh, there are some uh, MBA where uh, they can uh, have an option in MBA in IT or MBA along with the technical or uh, other fields also. Like uh, there is an MBA along with uh, 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 law. So it boils down to what exactly he wants to pro uh, portray himself towards and uh, what exactly is the end goal. If he really wants to do MBA just for uh, the paper and just for uh, what, what we guess, uh, uh, we should say degree, uh, it's not going to be, be much of an issue. They should uh, just go for a like, career counseling and uh, uh, check what's the best. But uh, if they are really, really serious, then uh, for, for MBA and uh, career, they should go for the elites. Elites can actually give them uh, a, b a bigger exposure. Elites, elite uh, institutions like uh, uh, national and international uh, uh, institutions, they, they can give them uh, a very nice exposure with uh, very good uh, institutions, a very, uh, a very good, uh, you know, lots of the people from uh, those places has got businesses across the globe. So they have very good chances of the communication uh, uh, with networking uh, with those people. The teachers are from very reputed and very nice places. They have got experiences. The projects they do is amazing. And if they uh, they just don't want that or if there is an issue with, uh, uh, you know, nowadays there is uh, uh, no capping. There is, there is no uh, hope lapse. They can definitely reach for that. This is what I absolutely, absolutely. Thanks, Ashutosh. Now, as we are moving towards the second part of our session out here, what I would like to say is that when we say the growth opportunities also which are there or the career growth opportunities, the career these days is not just limited to one or two aspects. So I'll just give you an example. So earlier it was just you get into any college, complete any degree. After degree, the competitive exams used to be there. Either you become an IS or do a chartered accountancy course or an engineering or a management or a medical, whatever the things were there, professional courses. And the career used to be great. And once you get admission to the IITs or IIMs or an IS, you are all set. Your future is set. So that was the paradigm which we are operating. With the startups, the dynamics have changed. So people, there are more and more people who are coming up with newer and newer ideas and the products which are there now currently if you see all those educational institutions where the faculties are good infrastructure if it's an engineering or medical college if the practicals that they are demonstrating is good the faculties is good and the placement is good we'll always have a better mileage so these educational institutions are also getting transformed when you're talking about bharat transformation journey these educational institutions have also commenced their journey also. And that is what they are bringing forth also. So in the days to come, the industry institute interface which is happening, it's at a much more, I would say, synchronized level which is happening. So the industry people are getting very much involved with the academic institutions, the autonomous universities or the autonomous colleges or private universities also, wherein they are talking about blended learning, collaborative research, and also including what is it that they require also. And that is giving a new thrust because students from third year, when they're involved with those colleges, they have a better chance of getting placed in those institutes also. We should definitely uh, have a little yeah. bit of, uh, uh, you know, research-based analysis. Some, some, someday uh, we can make a particular video on that also. Okay, go ahead and show that.
right now i don't have uh, today uh, as we were actually talking about the history and uh, how uh, bharat came into being and uh, what exactly happened and how bharat transformed so i've got some uh, statistics uh, over sub uh, since 1987 to 2028 like it's like a proposed data uh, that okay. see that uh, we have an inflation rate from 1987 to uh, 2028 so uh, when we see the chart definitely uh, at the time of uh, independence and after that it was really tough for uh, any government uh, to handle the case but uh, uh, a lot have uh, done amazing then uh, it was very less uh, so like 3.832 or uh, 3.98 to uh, around that from like uh, between 1999 uh, to 2005 but uh, certainly it changed and it was uh, kind of like all time high but after 2014 or so it uh, again is starting uh, uh, to decline and right now it's an amazingly low it's 4% so it's really really less uh, uh, like uh, even lesser than the uh, us economy actually and so ashutosh i would like to share one more thing here is um, there's a author his name is angles madison so this person who, who is a well known economics research and then he started compiling what was the contribution of the countries to the world gdp so his famous book is also there anybody can google english medicine books which are available on google also so english medicine listed the contribution of the countries so ashutosh when you say ancient india bharatvarsh which was there sone ki chidiya what we used to call india's contribution to world gdp was almost 27% it was the largest actually at that particular time it was yes. the largest literally largest so since the mughal invasion started from 14th century onwards it started a bit declining and with britishers it went down and still today we are limping at maybe 2 to 3% i don't know what is the current situation exactly today but it was one of the most magnificent things that is there and english medicine is not an indian it's mm-hmm. what's this person and the way he has put up all the statistics was just amazing so it is what is happening with most of the youngsters is they keep singing glories of the past i'm not saying don't sing the glories of the past but also what is required is preparation for the future so that gap needs to be mitigated ashutosh so my invitation to the youth of india is that start leveraging technology for the best of the things and also the mitigating taking up those challenges the various projects and whatever you like whatever the domain is there and then started with the causing breakthroughs in your career growth is the natural outcome of those things yes definitely and uh, again i have a very nice uh, statistics from again from the world bank because uh, they have very nice uh, statistics website so in that particular one uh, you can see this is gdp uh, as we were talking about gdp so i've compared these five institution there, there are lots of countries every single uh, country which uh, uh, can be traced and tracked uh, uh, are there and i actually uh, uh, set only five of them because right now we are at fifth number so mm-hmm. why to see below us so uh, right now usa china japan india is at the fourth actually right now it's uh, okay. uh, it's 4.07 trillion uh, Uh, for wow. germany and uh, india this is india actually no this is germany india is india is fifth actually it's india is 3.39 i think next six months will take take japan and germany <laughs> yeah actually uh, there, there's a uh, there is a progression like in 2028 to 2020 uh, 2030 uh, pe- people are actually uh, uh, saying in that particular time uh there is, there might be a chance that uh, we, uh, we can surpass america uh, china uh, is definitely going to within 5 to 6 years china is definitely going to be uh, uh, in rank 1 the world leader and usa will be second but in due time we can be second and there might be a chance if everything plays well because china definitely because uh, they, they just want to expand this expansion theory of china so they really really want to uh, you know and uh, in circle india and uh, the, the the people who actually support india like uh, we have seen in uh, pakistan we have seen in the uh, sri lanka and uh, uh, supporting neighboring countries so 
what exactly is India doing? Uh, China is trying to get uh, a uh, it, 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 there's a term it's called a golden uh, necklace. What India is doing is a diamond necklace. <laughs> India is encompassing a bigger circle of friends and making allies with stronger countries, unlike China uh, uh, going to Sri Lanka and trying to destroy the country and taking over the country. India yes. is actually okay. handshaking and making uh, the whole, uh, you know, encompassing the China and it might be a world leader uh, really very soon, uh, maybe uh, uh, before we actually die. Absolutely. But that also can be a separate topic, Ashutosh. But here is, as we are discussing about career and growth, let us be specific pointed to that topic. Now, if I tell you the statistics with regards to the PhDs that are there and the value creation of Indian PhDs, we are most ineffective, Ashutosh. So, the citations which are there, citations means basically how many times we are referring to those projects. So, in India, people do PhD only for the degree. Still, that is the norm. We are not coming up with the IPRs. We are not coming up with that practical patents. We are not coming up with the products. So, in India, what is the normally said is that people publish and then they perish with regards to PhDs. But that, after publishing, has to be patented and then prospered. So, that is the transformation which is currently happening and that is what is required to be done. So, with regards to the career growth also, the kind of inputs that are going out into the research, we have surely increased. And to match the levels of China with regards to research, to match the levels of the Europe, to match the levels of the USA, a lot of work still needs to be done. So, those are those gaps which I was talking. Now, even if you take just the instance of the world rankings of universities, we don't have much universities, Ashutosh, in the top 500. Hardly there are some IITs and IIMs. That's all. So that is the gap which we need to fulfill. Even in travel and tourism, we don't have those tourists coming still to India. We have so many things to offer. 